everyone. This is Shaina Silva. I'm here with my co-host, Daniel Silva, and this is Haiti Prosperity Podcast. In the last episode, we talked about managing resources and the opportunities that can come from effectively managing our natural resources, Haiti's natural resources, human resources, maritime resources, airspace resources, and the business opportunities that this can create. In this episode, I'd like for us to transition from the business opportunities, because we touched a little bit on that in the last episode, and go into the jobs that could potentially be created from those business opportunities. We have a huge youth unemployment crisis that we've been dealing with for years. And the unemployment can be solved by new business opportunities in a free market, in a competitive market, in a well-governed market. I'd love to explore with you, Dad, what kind of jobs could be created from those business opportunities present day Let's say we were managing our resources well and people were starting to take initiative and invest in these new businesses around our oceans, our airspace, and et cetera. What kind of jobs could potentially be created from those? And then once we kind of touch on that, I'd like for us to dream a little bit. 10, 15, 20 years into the future, the new business opportunities that will be presented and the types of jobs we could expect from those. So let's start with today in the present day business opportunities and the jobs around those. Okay. Well, just uh, we started by um, looking at the maritime space as a business uh, space uh, that has several uh, uh, sectors or several verticals that uh, is covered by just the maritime space. Uh, uh, And that space uh, would uh, certainly generate jobs like oceanography and maritime sciences and fishing and working on a boat and uh, boat mechanics. Uh, So it flows, uh, you know, people that are uh, handling refrigerations of products collected uh, in the ocean uh, and you name it, people can imagine the amount of activities in the ports and the wharfs where those products are, would be coming from. Uh, uh, so we won't have a pure list of jobs, but we can look at maritime space and see how much activity can uh, take place as far as jobs are concerned. It can be mechanics for boats. It Uh, the fuel providers for those vessels, uh, the fishery, refrigeration, and the cleaning of uh, fishes, and the the distribution, the storage, etc. All of that. uh, Yeah, great. So that's just in the maritime space. In the mining uh, space, uh, you have workers uh, that are very specialized in specific uh, earth uh, uh, elements, uh, the minerals. uh, Those are the engineers. You have the actual workers drilling and uh, excavating. Uh, and people that are um, segregating different parts of of uh, the the earth elements, uh, uh, the trucking, the storage, uh, the chemicals that are involved in separating uh, different uh, chemical elements. Uh, 
um, and, uh, and the transportation of, the, of those products uh, toward uh, the ports, if it's for exportation, or the, the storage of those same products for local consumption. Uh, so all of these um, uh, different uh, industries create activities from engineering all the way to uh, people that are just supporting those efforts, uh, all the way to uh, people driving trucks, etc., uh, uh, etc. Et and they create, you know, different types of businesses because the logistics around mining is a, a business in itself. Uh, so, so mining is yeah. a the logistics of the mine is a business. Is a business. Uh, and the, uh, the, the vessels that are picking up the uh, products, uh, you have people that have to help in those Except areas. The truck that's doing the logistics is, is an activity. So, you know, the, the imagination can go very far. And it's the same in the agricultural uh, industry. And these other factors that we talked about as far as monitoring uh, governance, um, both in private and public sector, generate jobs uh, in terms of law or um, rule of law monitoring uh, kinds of things. Because uh, uh, in and of itself is, is a job happened. generator. Yes, uh, it's not something that happens by itself because you have to have inspectors and uh, office uh, workers that are working just on maintaining the spirit of those uh, um, structures that have been put in place. And so just really looking at the possibilities here makes me think that if we could unlock all of this, there would be, there is a, an, an upteen opportunity of jobs. If activities, if the business opportunities are created that subsequently create the activities for which we would need to create jobs. And we would significantly increase productivity, competitivity, or competition with the global market, even locally, and, and start to see this self-restructuring of the social dynamics because now people are earning income and improving their quality of life because they're able to afford certain products and services, food, transportation, education, and you start to see a social mobility take place. Because now people are going from less than $2 a day or whatever is reported, $5 a day as reported by, I think, the World Bank, to now earning you know, upwards of $10, $15, $20 a day with all types of jobs or even becoming entrepreneurs and, and being service providers as a logistics truck driver or a packaging person. So the activities would push for this social mobility to happen. Absolutely, because some of the jobs that we've listed here are basically middle class jobs to upper middle class jobs. And once you have, uh, once you broaden the middle class or the upper middle class, they generate uh, jobs themselves uh, because they have to hire people to watch their babies and <laughs> exactly so that creates uh, other subcategories of jobs uh, just to support the fact that those people are very busy doing their uh, you know take doing their activities so they have to have the support uh, uh, personal support and what we'll see and this is a very interesting trickle down effect is the hair salons are going to start booming even more because now people are getting their hair done more frequently because they have meetings to attend, weddings that are more elaborate, just all kinds of activity where people are now able to use this residual income, 
from increased work opportunity, increased wages, etc., and living a more aspirational lifestyle versus a survival lifestyle, buying better cars, going to better schools, traveling more often, either in the country or outside. And this contributes to quality of life. Absolutely. Uh, when you look at the education sector by itself, uh, just to train people to adapt to those new industries, generate jobs for professors that would instill those uh, knowledge into those new skills that are needed uh, to support uh, this whole effort. So the education sector would be impacted. The public health sector or the health sector, health care would be impacted uh, because uh, uh, people uh, need uh, better health uh, uh, and uh, the, the just the, the faculties, the, the universities would be involved as well in that process of uh, development, uh, just in sharing knowledge, in training people for the new skills that are uh, being consumed by those uh, newly created industries. So it's a very dynamic uh, uh, process that we are talking about here. And so, and that's just for the jobs that could be created today with existing natural resource management or human resource management or maritime resource management. But there's also the jobs that will come from industries that are evolving industries that have not yet been created, which will themselves bring a whole new set of jobs, which will require skills to take those jobs. Let's dream a little bit. I mean, we have some sense of what those could be, but let's dream a little bit. What, what can we see 10, 15, 20 years from now that will happen in the global landscape where industries are shifting so much that the jobs as you know them today, the businesses as you know them today will no longer look the same. Therefore, the jobs will no longer look the same. Therefore, the skill sets will no longer look the same. Let's take us there, Dad. Take us there. <laughs> well, uh, several sectors will be affected in the next 15 to 20 years, because when we say 20 years from today, we are talking about 2042. And people, you know, tend to think that it's a far away time, but 20 years is, uh, you know, something that is about to, to get there. Um, in, just in transportation, passenger transportation, uh, you know, this, this regime of passenger transportation will move from private cars operated by driver, by a driver, uh, or you get into a public transport, and it will change into a regime of autonomous transport as a service. In other words, the, the cars will be self-driving. So those, that, there is a shift uh, that will take place there. In logistics, for example, uh, transport operated by a driver, the truck drivers, it, 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 repetitive automated loading onto containers, etc. In that logistics sector, you'll have more of an autonomous transport of goods and, uh, and products. Uh, and you'll also have smart loading robotics uh, uh, doing the loading onto the containers. Uh, yes, uh, I'm giving the regime change that, are, that, are, that is going to take place within the next 20 years. In manufacturing, for example, uh, industrial, right now it's industrial, 
centralized, repetitive manufacturing. That's what the manufacturing sector looks like. Uh, but the future manufacturing world would be a robotized, um, decentralized, discrete manufacturing. With 3D printing, for example, you won't have a major manufactory to build a car, but it will be 3D printed. Uh, so that will have an impact in the manufacturing uh, sector. Um, you know, that it's a lot uh, in sustenance, for example, agriculture, the food industry, the distribution channels, that's the regime of today in sustenance. Uh, however, in the future, in the very near future, you'll have urban cultivation. You'll find more agriculture taking place within the urban settings. So we have to prepare the urban uh, uh, for that. Uh, and you'll have robotic local food production. Uh, so the chefs, the people that are cooking the food may be replaced by uh, um, a robot. Uh, a, a robot. Uh, not maybe, that will be, <laughs> will be. Um, the built environment, in other words, the construction world. Today, it's a traditional construction and maintenance. Uh, but uh, in the very near future, you will have robotized construction and maintenance. You will have 3D printing of houses, uh, which uh, is going to change those Disrupt. industry. Yeah. Yes, uh, and so forth and so on. We have quite a few of uh, those industries that uh, will be impacted by, within the next um, uh, 20 years or so. Information, uh, the acquisition of information. Today, it's um, certified research and reports and the news. That's how we acquire information. But in the very near future, we'll have artificial intelligence. Uh, we'll have crowdsourcing as uh, a way of acquiring information. We'll have... Uh, uh, you know, different instruments to acquire information. And we are already feeling that in yeah. this uh, uh, social media space, okay. but it's going to the accelerate. Yes. Uh, so it's, um, and it's going to move in an accelerated way, if not an exponential way. We have to be ready for that, quite frankly. Um, even in the security space, uh, today security is material safety in society, you have social security, but the, in this very near future, you'll have a decentralized security, uh, you'll have crowdsourced safety. Uh, in other words, people will, you know, vote for the level of security that you need to have in different types of activities. So that's a different way of looking at security itself, uh, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, and uh, essentially, we need to sort of envisage the types of skill sets and the the jobs that will exist uh, for as a result of those new activities and i can give you a few example in the passenger transport that where we said that uh, it is going to be autonomous uh, transportation uh, uh, you know, you people, you'll have, instead of a driver, you may have a transport coordinator who will be responsible for ensuring that the means of transport are waiting for new rides when they are needed next. So that's a job in itself. Uh, you may have a traffic information analyst uh, who produces information creates new driving instructions <laughs> for robots and plans adjustment of the transport system. You may have um, somebody called uh, a remote, remote controller. Yeah. 
so you can you can be overseas and be a remote controller for right. an autonomous uh, right. car somewhere. I like that one. I like that one because you're going from driving a car today to driving a system of cars in the future without being in the car, but basically managing the software that is making the cars move yeah. because those cars are moving without a driver. They're autonomous. And you can be doing that for Italian cars while sitting in Haiti. Yeah. You could be doing it for San Francisco cars while sitting in New York. Yeah. Because the job will be remote. You won't have to be physically there because you're managing software, data, and movement. And it's a completely different set of skills and activities. Yes. And by that time, the broadband will be either 5G or 6G when we are talking about 2035. So communication will flow at, a, at an accelerated pace. A remote controller, for example, monitors driving he investigates problem situations and guides an autonomous vehicle when it's not able to proceed as needed this is sort of a pan mm -hmm. type of thing so the remote controller remote mechanics. Yeah, exactly remote robot mechanics. Yeah, exactly they already today in the tesla and those evs uh, uh, things are being right. repaired remotely the, the software are being um, uh, downloaded uh, into the car as car. they are driving. Uh, you will have uh, a job uh, called the vehicle cleaner because, you know, the car doesn't belong to anyone, so it has to be clean. So there will be, you know, people that occupy the position of a vehicle cleaner responsible for the cleanliness of the vehicles, both internally and externally um you'll have for the flying cars you'll have city air traffic controller which is a different uh different than the air traffic controller uh, for airplanes because uh, at a lower level they take care of the flight routes uh, the landing field conditions and availability of air taxis for people requesting Itself. Yes, that you know. So, and you'll have robot police and inspector of autonomous transport. Uh, those are um, uh, jobs that people will have to be trained uh, uh, to fill those positions, and they won't require necessarily four to eight years uh, schooling, but rather short, very precise knowledge in those. Uh, uh, uh activities. specific air activities air. right right i love especially the air taxis i would love to open an air taxi business in haiti that would significantly unblock the economy because the movement of goods and and people is important for trade is important for economic activity so imagine never having to be blocked in Saint, city soleil you know, any of those roads that have issues, but now you're going from city to city through an air taxi. And it's a self-flying air taxi, autonomous air taxi, which means there is somebody who is sitting in their home or in an office somewhere managing a fleet of air taxis without anybody driving it in person. This is exciting. Now, I like that we're talking about the future opportunities and the jobs that can be created around that because a lot of people are actually a little bit afraid around technological disruption and how new technologies and automated technologies will take away existing jobs. And it is true that it will take away existing jobs because those jobs will no longer exist as they are. They will evolve into a new set of jobs in those industries. So as much as there will be jobs that will disappear, there are new jobs that will be created. Just like back in the day when people were getting around through horse carriages, the horse carriage driver was a job and his job got disrupted disrupted by the 
advent of an automobile. And then the automobile came with having taxi drivers or Uber drivers. And that will eventually be disrupted by autonomous driving, which will eventually be managed by someone who is operating and maintaining and updating a software remotely. That's correct. Um, other jobs that will be impacted by this the new regime of the 2030s is the insurance uh, industry. Um, because, in fact, since nobody is driving the vehicle, so the driver is no longer responsible for potential accidents. Uh, so the insurance, you'll have more of micro insurance. You'll be insured doing your ride. But once you get off the vehicle, you are no longer insured. But the next person may be. So that's micro insurance. But th that creates a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for people involved in the insurance business uh, because insurance will be uh, very localized uh, and 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 very uh, tied to the vehicle itself uh, so uh, an insurance agent can be in, ha in Haiti and managing a micro insurance uh, somewhere else in the world uh, etc that, that's in the logistics uh, sector so we have plenty of uh, <laughs> examples yeah. and so with that i mean the possibilities are endless right and we can continue to give examples but i think in future episodes we can deep dive into some of them i think the autonomous vehicle should be an episode in and of itself because there's so much that will come from that opportunities challenges new ways of doing new ways of upskilling and maintaining that's an episode in and of itself but for this purpose for this episode we're speaking at the thirty thousand foot view all of the possibilities at once and what could happen in the future how can Haiti prepare itself for this? Because so far we've talked about resiliency planning. We've talked about a common doctrine and, and a common narrative for our Haitianity. We've talked about good governance and the ability to execute on our promise to ourselves as we head towards a pathway to prosperity. But with all of these opportunities that will be coming and mostly coming from all over the world, these technologies are being created by people from all over the world. How can we prepare ourselves today to seize those opportunities, to take advantage, if not even participate in creating them too? Well, we'll have to reform our way of educating our youth. This business of having long-term Parker type of uh, learning may no longer work for the 2030s uh, uh, job uh, skill sets because those would be very specialized one to two months maximum micro learning training that exists online. So your real investment as far as education for this new world is concerned is more by uh, uh, reinforcing your broadband backbone so that it covers the entire country uh, so that not just people in, uh, you know, the cities. major urban cities and, and the major urban settings are getting educated, but that anywhere. it can spread anywhere. So people in the Grand Dance area could be learning how to be a remote controller for uh, the city of Boca Raton, uh, for example. So uh, broadband investment is something that we have to really be, 
uh, and, and we are talking about the backbone of the right. broad broadband. Once you have the proper backbone, companies, different companies will come and invest uh, in the broadband space uh, in the country. And of course, electricity as well. So those two infrastructures are extremely important uh, for the future. So broadband and electricity. Um, we'll pause there for this episode because I think you've touched on something that will require its very own episode, and that is the education sector and the modernization of the education sector, being able to educate the masses at scale. Today, the way our schools are structured, there is no way we can educate a population at scale, especially if they can't even afford to go to school. So maybe in a future episode, actually most definitely in a future episode, we'll touch on that. The future of education for Haiti prosperity. Okay. All right.